check out the frog egg. Look at this, this is in a kind of puddle in the middle of the woods. And if you look, they're in kind of clumps. That's how you know they're frog eggs, because toad eggs, they're in kind of long strings. So these are definitely frogs. And actually when we were here the other day, we saw the frogs. But now, if you look around, you see it's all churned up. You see all that? There's been wild boar here, probably last night. They have been probably taking a mud bath and also perhaps looking for frogs to eat. Now they're not normally predators, wild boar, but if there's a frog hanging around in the mud, it might have a little gobble. Hopefully the frogs kind of got away and hid. But I can't see any frogs here now, but I can see their eggs. There's going to be plenty of baby tadpoles in this pool. And we'll come back and have a look. Anyway, take care, guys. Hi, guys. Adam from EcoWise here. Now, I've come back down to this puddle that I showed you. Perhaps you've seen it already, where the frog eggs are in these nice masses. The problem is, normally this time of year, March, in this area, rains a lot. And for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years, frogs have been laying their eggs in puddles just like this. And it normally rains a lot. But this year, it's the climate, as you all know, has changed quite dramatically. And it hasn't rained. And this puddle, every day I see it's getting drier and drier. And in fact, some of the eggs are already probably dead because there's no water in this puddle. So what I've come to do is to try rescuing some of these frog eggs. I've got a bucket and I've got a net. And over here is a little stream. Now, this is complicated. Like some people say, oh, you should let nature take its course. Survival of the fittest. Let them die because you don't know the bigger picture. You know what? I don't get that. Nature. I'm part of nature. And my feelings tell me to be kind and to try being caring. And we all have those natural feelings within us of being kind and caring and compassionate. Compassionate means you don't want something to suffer. These eggs here, which are going to turn into baby tadpoles, and if the conditions are right, will turn into frogs that will sing and be part of this beautiful ecosystem. And compassion, I don't want them to die. I know what that, I have empathy. I know what it would feel like to be in that. If I lived in water, I can just imagine how it would be if the water in this little puddle starts drying up every day and drying up and drying up and drying up and then salt. I don't get that thing of just leave it to die. I used to watch documentaries when I was a kid on BBC that would show all kinds of things with animals that are going to die. And then the people on the nature talk and say, and that's the way of nature. The survivor of the fittest. Nature takes a heavy toll. And I always used to think, but wait, there's someone holding a camera there. Why don't they help? Anyway, I think it's part of our nature to be generous and kind and compassionate and help. So I'm going to do everything I can now with my intention to help save this frog spawn so they can turn into tadpoles and they can turn into frogs. But I have to think about the consequences of my action. If I take these now, and over here, there's a stream. Now, if I put these eggs in my bucket, which I'm probably going to do, but I'm thinking carefully. If I put them in the stream, perhaps the conditions in the stream aren't right for these frog eggs. Frogs often lay their eggs in still places like ponds or puddles. The stream is, the water's moving, so it's got more oxygen, it's probably colder. Maybe the eggs just won't develop in the stream and they'll die anyway. Maybe if I put them in that stream, these eggs are going to grow into baby tadpoles. And tadpoles at first, for the first few weeks, a vegetarian, they eat plants, especially algae and kind of a lock for this material, a material that comes from outside of the stream ecosystem. And they eat dead material, dead leaves in particular. But there's this point when their back legs start coming out and they start to metamorphose and change into little frogs where they become carnivorous. They eat meat. 
So if I put them in this stream here, and there's some other insects and some other animals that live in this stream, and I put these eggs in there, then when those baby tadpoles get to the point where they metamorphose and start to want to eat meat, they're going to eat whatever's in that stream. And that'll be kind of my fault. But if my intention's good, that I'm trying to save life here, it's complicated, isn't it? It's really complicated. But anyway, I'm going to rescue some of these. I'm not quite sure how. I probably... Another idea. What about this? I could get my bucket. I could go to the stream. I could get some water. And I could fill this puddle up again. Maybe that's a better idea. Maybe I'm going to try it. In fact, for f at first I'm going to try that. I'm going to get some water, fill up this puddle, and hope these eggs turn into tadpoles. But if in a few weeks I see that it doesn't rain... And it's just not sustainable for me to keep giving water to the puddle because the temperature warms up and the rate of evapotranspiration or the rest of it, the puddle keeps drying up when it gets warmer. Maybe I will move them to the stream. Or perhaps I've got a little jar in my bag. Perhaps I'll take some of the eggs and I'll put them in another pond that's just over there. But then what about the consequences for that pond there? Obviously, if we think too much, we don't land up doing anything. But if our intentions are good, we can help those that are old and that are sick. And they're infirm with our compassion. That's what we've got to do with each other. Help each other. Help the world. Take care. Be kind. Love to you all. Adam from Eco Waste. Bye-bye.